Welcome to Covers' Blitz Show. Thursday night football, Derek. Saints, cards. Cards have moved to minus two and a half, total of 44. Injuries. How difficult is it to project games like this with injuries? Obviously, what came out yesterday after practice and, and the laundry list of which it is. How does that change projections from Wednesday to Thursday? Yeah, it uh, it's not the easiest kind of game to project because – we don't even know a hundred percent who's going to be a quarterback for the Saints. Yeah. Like they're both off the injury report. It seems like it's going to be Andy Dalton, but we don't know. It could be Winston. So yeah, it's uh, it's extremely difficult to try to figure that out ahead of time. You know, as of, you know, yesterday, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, there were almost no props available for this yeah. game because there was so much unknown about it. And we have a little more certainty now. So there's definitely some ways that we can lean, lean towards, I think. Um, but yeah, like the Saints have been dealing with tons of injuries to their wide receivers, to their quarterbacks. We don't know if James Conner is going to go for for Arizona. Like, there's just lots of stuff up in the air. Yeah, so let's get right to it, just for betters to get their heads around. Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Marcus Lattimore, Adam Troutman, left guard Andrus Pete, all ruled out for the Saints. Dalton Winston, both off the injury report, like you said, but Dennis Allen won't name a starter. Jumping over to Arizona, Marcus Brown is out. There's injuries to the Arizona O line. Newly acquired Robbie Anderson will be very limited. James Conner is a game time decision. Daryl Williams, I believe, is out. Eno Benjamin was on the injury report, but he's good to go. And DeAndre Hopkins is back. This is, there's so <laughs> many strings being pulled everywhere in this game. But one shining light, I think, Chris Olave, over four and a half receptions, plus 105. What's the projection for him and what do you like? Yeah, I like this one quite a bit. Uh, the Blitz's projection for Olave is 5.7, so we're getting basically a full reception. We're getting it at at a little bit of plus money. Plus 105 is the best line we've been able to find. Uh, with Thomas and Landry and Troutman and everyone, you know, basically ruled out now for the Saints, Olave is going to be the clear-cut number one here. He's been getting a massive target share. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of competition for those targets at this point. And... Uh, this game situation here is a good one. They're they're at home. They're in a dome. Uh, there's no wind. It's the third fastest paced game of the week. So we should expect basically inflated volume overall, extra passing volume, extra passing efficiency. Uh, lots of good things at work here for, for the past games. Yeah, I think that concussion two weeks ago kind of softened his market because he was taking off. Um, 14 catches, 247 yards with Winston under the helm in two games. And then he started getting in a groove with Andy Dalton before getting that concussion in the third quarter, I believe, uh, the Seattle game. He had six early targets in that game, uh, seven of 28 passes in the game before that. And then on top of it, we got an Arizona secondary, dead last success rate, maybe without their starting safety. So Chris Olave over four and a half receptions. I, I told you before, I think the reception play is the play with Dalton under center. And that's the way it's leaning. Yeah, I'm completely with you. I think that's the move. Um, if we, you know, even if we get Winston, that's still fine. They've been more pass heavy this year with Winston they than they have been with Dalton. So probably some extra pass volume anyway, if it's Winston. If not, like you said, he, he's developed a pretty good rapport with Dalton anyway. And then on the other side, someone else has to catch the ball. I know, obviously, we said uh, Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry are out. Adam Trotman's out, too, which puts Juwan Johnson in, in the role of the middle. But Traquan Smith, over two and a half catches, plus 136. It's usually between him and Marquez Callaway kind of digging up those secondary receiving options. And we're looking at Callaway's market, only plus 114 for over two and a half. Talk me through Traquan Smith, over two and a half catches, uh, projections and what you like. Yeah, so the Blitz is projecting here 2.8 for, for Traquan Smith. So the line's 2.5. It's projected to win only about 55% of the time, but we're getting it at plus 136. So it's a really good number for a projection that is slightly over anyway. And, and you know, again, very similar to, to Alave. Like Thomas is out, Landry's out, Troutman's out. You know, last week when when they had all these injuries, Traquan Smith ran a route on 71% of the dropbacks. That's less than Callaway did, so he is kind of like the, the third wide receiver here, essentially. But 71% is a big number. Uh, again, we should expect extra volume, extra efficiency, extra passing in this, in this game environment. So I do like this quite a bit if you can get it at a big plus number, like plus 136. 
exactly. Three targets, three catches, 43 yards and a TD last week. So week to week confidence, obviously on the angle here with Dalton, probably under center. I, I know that's what, what the majority is, but who knows? It, it could be Winston too. But like you said, Running a route on 70 for 77%, that's uh, that's a giant route participation for a guy who's, I think, uh, three catches in two games and one catches in two other games. Give us some Chris Olave shares over four and a half receptions, plus 105. Traquan Smith over two and a half catches, plus 136. And let's have a fun Thursday night football game for once. Thanks again, Derek. We'll see you guys back here Sunday night football.